Boy, howdy. I lost power, which is never fun. Um, so let's actually resume where we were and put it all together. So if I jump inside the VR world, oh no, hearing slapback. You can actually see that I am now the character that we created from the AI, quickly and terribly cut out. And I can also transform into the other monster character, boogity boogity. <laughs> and really quickly, I have a body, hands, technically eyes, if you want to call them eyes. Um, and this allows me to immediately become a character in the world, but I'm this weird 2D character that can maneuver in a very fun and exciting way. Um, so this is just showing the application of how I can take AI elements, immediately clip them out, turn them into characters, turn them into background scenery. Remember that background was actually um, an AI element as well. And if we start layering and compositing these and actually taking some time and some energy, that uh, this could scale pretty effectively. It's kind of cool to be inside of an AI generated piece of art that I was just looking at this morning. Now I'm gonna see if I can take it to that next level using one of Isaac's actual renders. So let's jump back into the work. I'm going to Twitter. Everything might have to reboot because everything died. Nope, it's right here, perfect. And we've got his reply. Look at these sexy, sexy renderings. Okay, let's go full screen with this. Whoa. Not what I intended to do. I'm not sure what that did on y'all's end. Um, but if I just kind of scrub through, let's see. I love, so I love this. This is awesome. Um, and I feel like that is exactly the type of kind of stage show or set that you'd want. So this might take some cleanup because it's just being grabbed from Twitter and it's gonna be really, really bad resolution. But let me grab that and let's find, here's technically two of the characters um, with just kind of like a green scrim, if you will, which is also very theatrical. Uh, so we could take inspiration from that. Let's keep scrubbing. Well, that's probably the most clean that we've seen. <laughs> but that's the most fun. <laughs> and definitely. Okay, the stage show, sure. I think it helps that it's been on Broadway. Is that there is an actual stage show to pull from. It's not a totally foreign idea that SpongeBob would be a play. So that is helpful in this case. <laughs> Spongeweed. Cool. That's pretty cool. That's a fun avatar. So we might come back to that. That may be my favorite so far, personally. Although this is, it feels more like a scenic piece, yeah, because it's so large. That's cool, that green character, absolutely stealing that. And I would imagine that Isaac would actually have the high quality versions of these, so we could make much better estimations. But yeah, I'm gonna grab, this one looks pretty similar to what we were looking at before, and I think it's a very fun avatar. Here, let me toggle between that and backwards, backwards, backwards. So that one. It's more artistic. This is, this is more artistic. So I'm going to grab that. Again, these are just terrible screen grabs of a tweet, of a tweet video. So this has been compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed. And I'm then going to open up Photoshop and guesstimate some pixels to cut out these characters. Um, but I think that what I should be able to do here is take that very cool, like yellow, 
textured stage on a nice clean green scrim and then really moody lighting like a spotlight and then put the spongebob character and the squidward character right next to each other thanks michael just seeing what i can get away with really fast to demonstrate this for isaac let's see open Go find my screen grabs. So yeah, we have that. These are so small. Oh, it's gonna be so bad. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see what the content aware even does with this. Not bad. Not bad. Um, I think wanna add that little piece. See if it adds it or not. It's incredible that it can do this. It's so cool. It's really thinking. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, we didn't get any other data, so let me just hover over it. Okay, that did it. Give all of the mouth back. Give it, give that mouth back. Copy, paste. All right, so this is what we're working with. Which again, just even at a cleanup level, like that's so much easier to just now kind of get in here. Even real quick and terrible like this. It's so much faster using the content aware. Look, and then there's people out there who actually know what they're doing <laughs> with content aware and photo manipulation. So you start engaging people to actually cut these out and clean them up. You could walk away with some pretty sexy assets. Cool, cool, cool. Perfect. That's as far as I'm going to go here. <laughs> I love that. That's so bizarre. All right. Now, same here. Let's cut this out. What's up, Darren? What's up, Ninja Warrior? All right. And now add on this little dude. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's pretty much the outline of that character. So, all right, let's start there. Okay, and now let's content aware again. Cut this out. Thank you so much. Oh, actually, could we just select the green instead and delete it? I'm doing well, Darren. I started this video this morning and thought I was just gonna work for, on this for an hour and then I lost power, and right in the middle of it. And I was like, oh, man, I got to at least finish this and show people what I came up with. So this is AI-generated art um, for a SpongeBob play that was generated by GPT-3, which is AI. And so I thought, oh, well, what if we use GPT-3 for the actual scenic elements? So yeah, so what I'll do now is I'm going to take this. This is a really cool set piece. I wonder if it will cut it out if I just do this. Really bizarre and weird. Ah, it doesn't quite. That's a bummer. Well, we can start there. So copy, paste, just separated that layer. Now let's just try to grab this yellow brick road on the bottom here. Not bad. It pulled that right out. So from this, I think what we'd be able to get away with is, can we isolate these objects? We can. Very cool. And 
And if I had the actual high-res images, I could probably pull a much more impressive section of this. See, it's still, it still isn't quite doing it. Yeah, it's not nearly as impressive as we want. But let's come back to this real fast. And let's use the spot brush. Does that clean that? No, it does not. Fine, we'll use the stamp. And let's grab this, oh, let's grab this line. Really terrible. Really terrible. Might be going about this the wrong way by trying to like precisely replicate it rather than the spirit of it which is this is a really interesting idea of three stage pieces that kind of come out at us so what i might do is just treat this as its elements so let's get an ellipses for the edge of the stage. Yep. Yeah. Um, we could go one better. Well, we'll get there. Um, and now rectangular. To take it to that edge. Right? Ish. Why not? Yeah, real terrible. Perfect and transform skew hmm it's trying to snap onto something which I don't love give me control let me do it stop trying to be smarter than me computers there we go so we merge these into one asset And now let's just throw a random texture on there. Just a little bit of a pattern. Well, that's interesting can make it we can make it weed <laughs> as the actual texture of the floor so the floor is textured by this yellow weed mm, not bad not great not bad Just seeing what my options are. That's probably the closest. Do that. Bring the opacity down. Cool. So now I've taken inspiration and that's just gonna be a scene element that I throw on the ground. And I guess we should make it um, rasterized. So, so it's like that. So we'll just export that as a PNG. Yeah, let's call it rectangle. Why not? Onto the trusty desktop. And then these little elements in the background are so cool. And I wish I could just 
I wish they could be individual little <laughs> things, but if I had the high resolution image, I would probably cut them out um, and just do that. So for now, we need a background image. And it needs to fade between that blue and that purple. So let's grab the lighter purple. Let's grab the darker blue. Can maybe use more of a, a difference that's a little more dramatic. There we go. And now let's add a pattern to it, maybe. Nope. It's not gonna do it. I just want it kind of like a little mess. I didn't need, I don't need all this. <laughs> Nuts, no thank you. It's slightly better, just it doesn't look lit the way I want. What's up Vanilda, how you doing? So this is just now a nice gradient blue that we can export. For the like scrim. And we'll keep these for now just like to be in the background. It's not gonna look good for what we're doing right now. I'm so sorry, I do not speak that language, but I hope that you are well. Um, just background nonsense, let's call it save. Perfect. And now let's open recent, this Bob thing that we played with earlier. <laughs> I am obsessed with this green monster person. This is so cool. Uh, let's do that, let's do that. It's gonna be real weird. And then like we did before, because I thought this was perfect, I take the green, use the top of the head as the hands. Cool, so those are gonna be the hand colors. And then let's get rid of underneath Bob for right now. Give this some, some opacity, file, export, quick PNG, yes friend. <laughs> um, green monster, love it. Undo, get rid of the green monster. And I am obsessed with this. This is so cool. So letting this be our primary character. Really nice. And then make a double. And I guess the question is, do I want this one's hands are red? So we could use this red pop as the accent color, rather than keeping everything yellow. Or we could use the green of the body. All good options, all good options. Let's start here. That could be interesting. That'll probably look cool in the way that it textures. Or should we grab some of the red as the accent? Yeah, so we'll do this. We're using the mouth for the hands, just to see how that skins. And then 90%. Goodbye, sponge. Our 
artistic Bob. Perfect. Let's quit out of here. We're not going to save any of this. <laughs> no one wants it. We have this. Cool, cool, cool. And then... Brain freeze blender. Cool. Let's open up the project we were working on. Oh no, <laughs> didn't save. Is it on the desktop? It's not. Is it on downloads? It's not. Where did I hide this? Oh, because it's not a blender file. Duh. It's just an, a GLB. Because I'm breaking my rules. So now desktop. You technically pull from any of these, but let's go back to our original robot test. And we actually found that the, these eyes and this mouth just are useless for right now. Or they just need to be textured, right? That was the issue? So yeah, so they just need a material. So they have a material that for some reason is not populating. Okay, so where is the shader, and why isn't that working? If I just take this out, will it? Here. I mean, that seems to be working. What appears to be the problem, friend? Yeah, the eye works great. It's right there. So don't change the eye. change this. A new image. Open up the things we just saved out. Artistic Bob. And same, we need this to be Artistic Bob. Cool. Now, these eyes. Could just be a color. So I can un undo that. Let's just see if we want to make them a yeah, let's match. Let's match the eyes they're supposed to be. Perfect. And then, whoop. Scale both of them a little, not a little larger, a lot larger. They still need to be much bigger. There we go. That is terrifying. All right, so now these basically like contact lenses will be temporary boggly eyes. Or am I being dumb about this? What if they were black and they were the pupils? And then the pupils were going in and out. See, indecisive. Every time. That's much more fun. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that character a lot. <laughs> I am a child. I am delighted by this. Uh, and this mitten is still here, so we'll hide that. And see, isn't this nice that the hands basically have yellow with that red texture on it, like we totally did on purpose 
What are you talking about? And then this floating nonsense is an audio morph that should respond to audio data and make the mouth move. But Bob has a mouth here, so we can make it larger just so we can see it. But I think what we would normally do is probably decide to take away Bob's mouth so that it appeared to be talking when it received audio. Okay, let's put the 3D cursor in the middle of that and set the origin to the 3D cursor. And now when we rotate, we have a little more control over this, perfect. What's interesting is by covering the mouth, we will see and then not see the red. So that's not not a thing. Make it a little more red. Cool. So now what that should do is when I speak, it'll make the mouth bigger, uh, ideally. <laughs> but this is a great little creature. If we had the high resolution image of this, are you kidding me? Who wouldn't want to watch this? Um, now file export a GLTF. We want to include only the visible objects. Bob Isaac, Bob Isaac. And we'll do the same thing with the monster now to give a monster version for Isaac. So let's make a new image. Will you let me do that? Let's do monster. Same with the desktop. Green monster. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really set up for this. And I think that I would take a lot more time really making this asset work. But um, we might be able to quickly open up the UV scroll. Yeah, we can do that. And select all the UVs, and can we just stretch them? And then slide them. So technically now this should better accommodate our friend. Hello friend. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, and then let's give this one demon eyes as well but they're much smaller eyes. Oh, and you can see there's there's parts of it that I didn't actually clean up correctly. So those are gonna be annoying. Whose fault is that, Brendan? <laughs> I, I do like this idea of the pupils being the googly eyes for these characters. It definitely immediately adds personality. <laughs> okay. And kind of slightly a kiltered. And because this character is obviously a weed leaf, I think the people should be like really small, right? Like, hey man. <laughs> oh no, now, now they just look terrified. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, well. Um, I don't hate it. It's not not a thing. You were mentioned, Royal Reeds. Welcome. Thanks for showing up. Have you checked out NPC Musical? What do you think of this weed creature <laughs> that we're applying? <laughs> We've made an, an avatar out of. Got hands. Little weed creature. Perfect. So now let's export this character. 
and we need a monster for Isaac. Because this is based off of Isaac's drawings, visible. It is different. It is different. <laughs> That's, that is the, a good descriptor of pretty much everything that I do. Different. <laughs> uh, cool. So now, no one wants to save any of this. So don't save. Neat. Let's scrub back to that original vision board image that I was really taken by because it was very theatrical. Ooh, I missed that one. That's very cool. That. I mean, it just screams Wizard of Oz in the apocalypse with SpongeBob. So now if we go back into Spoke, let's go back to our original project. So we designed this very quick, temporary nonsense. And now let's throw in some new temporary nonsense. We're going to get rid, I guess let's hide it for now, just in case. Oh, the projections are nice. Leave that. It's the mesh. No, we'll keep the walk mesh. The sphere. That must be it. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, and someone just baked a UV scroll, which looks really cool. Um, and it's perfect. And then instead of this image back here, let's upload in that, it's a show, it's a show. That's right, Belinda. Um, this blue backing. And this, this might be too low quality to even do anything with. Uh, if we go, that was the environment. Yeah, it's just a blob. But not a terrible blob. It is slightly theatrical. Let's go for like 20. Because it has a nice top to it. Here, get above it. Center it. Okay, this needs to be like 25 or something. Yeah, it looks a little better. Cool. This is where I should really spend my time being super pre precious about <laughs> how this lines up. All right, if we rotate it, that's not bad. It kind of adds a little something on the horizon. Cool, cool. I'm trying to think which way in the world when I was, I think I was looking this way. So let's now move it up a little bit. Cool. And now what we're going to do is add in that stage four that we came up with really terribly. But my goal is to just show how we could take a variety of 2D elements and use them to create a 3D world. So yeah, so there's that. Okay. Perfect. So there's our stage four coming out of this like amorphous, weird coral thing. Right? And what is the lighting like in here? Oh, where's the simple water? Yeah, so bring the water down. So we want to be aware of the water the whole time in the scene. Cool. Oh, wow. That tide height needs to be much smaller. <laughs> and that wave height is insane. So bring that down. Where did the water go? There it is. Nice. So that's just hanging out over us. It's way too fast. Someone's going to like have a fit with that. Tide speed 0.1. Uh, is that wave speed? Still not. Oh, is that the ripple speed? That probably makes more sense. Ah ha ha. That's nice. It's like barely floating. 
and then let's make it let's make it the color of or as close to the color of our backdrop as we can get. Cool. That feels like it's reflecting. That's nice. I have to do this just to see. Let's take another water, a duplicate water. Let's make it much smaller, one by one. Interesting. Okay, so here's a water. Uh, I think I have to flip it around. Yeah, I want to be able to see it. And I want to try to map this to the yellow. And I'm very curious how that might give us some reflections to work with. Mm-hmm. That is not the right color yellow. <laughs> It's more of an orange. In the ballpark. Cool. So that's the stage area. Directional light, I'm going to get rid of entirely. Um, is there other light in here? I feel like there's a skybox. So... I feel like this should be much later. I'm just trying to make this more theatrical without it becoming flat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ooh, that's nice. It's a little something. And then, is there another light in here or not? It's using fog. I think the fog that we would want to use is not black, but the very dark purple. Oh, that's the background color. Interesting. All right, that kind of collides. Point oh oh one. Cool. This feels a little bit more thick f fog in the world. This needs to be much smaller. Hmm. It doesn't seem to have changed the water. That is interesting. Oh, my rectangle has, well, that's too bad. There, that's cut out a little more. Great. Now what I want is, I just wish I could make everything a little more, mm, a little more theatrical. It might be the skybox. What if I disable that? Not really seeing a difference. So let's add a spotlight, which just comes out of the box here. Spotlight. Boom. It's definitely going to be a yellow or kind of an orangey yellow spotlight. The intensity should be like 100 so we can see it. And the inner cone angle, the outer cone angle. So it is a real sharp, it's like a, just a flashlight. The range should be, let's say 10. And now lift this up in the air, rotate it around. 
Cool. I almost feel like this coral is too is too much, this projection. I wish we could make it a little less. But what are you gonna do? All right, back to that spotlight, and then I will stop nitpicking because the spotlight should be here, right? And then just for fun, let's take this as a square object. Yes, give me a new one, thank you. This is more what the original looked like. It's much more of a kind of a, a scrim, like a proscenium stage. It was not such an elegant environment. I feel like this looks bad. Does this look bad to everyone else? <laughs> it looks terrible. Uh, place at origin. Yeah, that's what we were working with originally. Has a background scrim. It actually doesn't look like the worst thing in the world, given how lightly colored the stage floor is. So I must wonder, should we revert back to that? Copy URL. Oof, that's, that's just a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, but we could map this onto something long-term. So like this could be what the coral is made out of, which would be Kind of cool. But for now, we'll just put this backstage. Okay. We're close. I promise. I know this is nitpicky. But I'm really hoping this makes it all just look nice. Or as nice as it can for a nightmare show. And then do 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 we want to make this was something I noticed. This is a cheat that we do all the time for desktop. Is we make the avatars much larger. Because when you're on a computer, when you're in VR, they're one to one. They they feel more your size. But when you're on a computer, it feels very far away. And so it can just feel like it's not really resonating, connecting with the audience. Cool. I'm going to make it split the difference, 3.5. How about that? Cool. For the one person who has remained, thank you. <laughs> I can now publish this room, and we can go check it out as some very weird Nightmare Fuel. I think I also saved out the blue backing. No, no, no. The, the background nonsense. Yeah. So let's take this background nonsense. Just audition it real fast, actually. What if we replace this with the background nonsense? Yes. It's not great but it's not terrible. Incredible. So my hope now is the spotlight is hitting, it's hitting the stage. 
Should I just try a different color just in, so I can see what it's doing? Architecture kit. Give me a floor. In case this isn't really a floor. Floor one-sided. Boomtown. And I don't want it to be a carpet. Cement brushed? No. Linoleum? No, it's tile. Paint satin. Hmm. It's not as dark as I want it to be. Zinc planks. It's not not a thing. Oh, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Can you tell where I waste all of my time? It's a Saturday. I can goof off a little. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like building custom shelves or something where, like, your room is not square and you're discovering that in real time. You're like, oh, wow, nothing is accurate. Neat. Yes, we don't like the zinc. What does wood slats look like? No. <laughs> Should we just go back to, I just want a plain, just give me pure satin. How about that? Paint satin. It just doesn't look black. I just want a black stage. Why is it so hard just to have a black stage? Roof tile, plaster. Wood parquet. Nope. <laughs> All right, one more. I'm going to look at this metal hex tile that I know is shiny and I know is black. So I'm just going to take that. So this is going to be our four. So this is our stage actually get more better spatial awareness if we define the space rather than make it expansive. There we go. So now what we're showing is that there is a stage and this yellow bit extends beyond it beyond it, beyond it, kind of like a uh, thrust. So if this was an actual theater, we'd see this thrust coming out into the audience with a yellow stage. We see the nightmare fuel in the background as our kind of back scrim, which is really nice. Make that a little larger, maybe. No, it felt con contained, which was nice. We just can't have the ceiling. Cool. That's not out of thing. Uh, I wonder if in my assets I have lights. Oh, these are just normal lights? These aren't... Ah. Never mind. I just didn't know if I maybe had st stage lights. But it does not look like I do. I don't. Cool. All right. Enough of this. Publish. Whoa. Oh, that was open. <laughs> Publish. <laughs> and we'll go take a look at this. I'll call it art. <laughs> I'll call it something. It's still a very light scene because it's all 2D assets and elements instead of a bunch of 3D stuff that's taking up a bunch of mesh and triangles. So that's the other advantage to using 2D AI art to quickly create like little 
cut out pieces. And again, these were pulled from Isaac made a video of saved images compressed for Twitter. I took screen grabs of that video on Twitter, like Twitter size, cut those out using um, content aware. So it's like within the nearest pixel. Um, just to disclaim that like, this is as bad as it gets. <laughs> so if this looks remotely convincing or remotely intriguing, um, there might be a there there. It could be interesting. Oh, I don't hate it. All right, let's enter. And we're all turned around. So if we were the audience, let's fly out a little further because we would not be on stage. This is our stage. And I'm a little aware of, I would make the, the circle bigger. I would really figure out the ceiling a little bit more because you can really see that it's cut out. So let's just dial that in here. This is not terrible. Like, come on. Okay, now change name and avatar, change avatar. Let's upload the two nonsense avatars that we made using Isaac's Twitter images. Where would you have put that? What would you have done with such a thing? Why not put it there? Okay, Bob AI. Oh no, only one of the eyes is in the right spot. Oh, this is so good. Oh, it's this is so good. Okay. <laughs> this, this is why I like Onboard XR. Onboard XR is meant to be very scrappy, very sketchy first prototypes, specifically because when you're not looking at something that somebody invested a lot of time and a lot of money into, and you're just seeing the practical application of their vision, it, it the stakes are a little lower. Like no one's, no one has to feel awkward. Like, Oh gosh, don't tell Brendan that this looks weird. I'm like, yeah, I know this looks really weird. Um, so let's put this, let's put this over here so I can click on it pin. Great. And then upload the other character. Change name and avatar. We're going to go create an avatar <laughs> and upload the monster. Valinda, I hope you're the one person that is still hanging out <laughs> to see how this nightmare ends. Um, monster bad. Save. Oh, I just noticed that Royal Reads thought this was interesting. Thanks, Royal Reads. Copy link address. That is what I'm doing. I should eat lunch at <laughs> the end of the day. Great. Good work-life balance. Cool. So now, here you go. Here is the the stage made from AI art in like a matter of minutes, obviously. Let's refresh this page. Oh no. I don't have Wi-Fi on my device. That's not true. So I will take the stage. I will probably be an old character from our earlier prototype. Excellent. So you see me on stage. <laughs> Hello. I'm a terrifying monster person. And then here's our nightmare SpongeBob that we've created. And I could be, let's see, come all the way down stage to perform my monologue. Oh, to sponge or not to sponge. To generate AIs or not to generate AIs. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and then let's try this other character transforming into the monster. You can fly up into the audience's face. Oh, and the, uh, <laughs> the mouth is not working. It's not responding to any data, but 
the eyes are fantastic. Like, this is great. If this is the the weed creature. Oh no. <laughs> and one more time back into our protagonist. I'm kind of weirdly turned. There we go. And let's see, center it as one should. And the eyes are a little messed up, but you can at least see. Oh, no, they're this way. That's That was the problem. The problem was me all along. Who would have guessed? Great. So now I can perform like this and talk and take in my audience and perform and be aware of all the nightmare behind me <laughs> and in front of me, apparently. Cool. So I don't hate it. This is pretty theatrical. Take a bow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hooray. Thank you for coming to the show. So what do you think, Isaac? <laughs>